It's now a year since we made the first video of this small garden. 25 square meters, 270 square feet. And we've been seeing how much we can grow in the course of that year. And it, it's been impressive actually. I've, I've enjoyed this as a project and I can show you now the results of summer growth. The previous film to this was in July, so just under two months ago. And since then it has been pretty warm lovely temperate summer and we've had some rain actually we had 3.4 inches 83 millimeters of rain in August after three really dry months so that has reduced our watering we have needed to water quite a bit in the really hot dry weather we were watering here probably every second day maybe every third day with a hose maybe three four minutes at a time particularly favoring the vegetables which are going through their strongest period of growth. So that would have been like these beans. Not now, but back in July and early August, we were giving them a lot of water. And that's because these beans are, now I want them to dry a bit. They're for dry harvest. They're the um, beans which I let dry on the plant to make dry beans to store over the winter. This is sar runner bean or pole bean. You can see there's a lot here. There's gonna be a big harvest, but it won't be until October. So if it's dry now, fine for them. Whereas here we have more leafy plants which need moisture. And these are lettuce, which we've been picking. And there's actually a contrast. We left one unpicked to show the difference. We're picking them every week, taking off outer leaves. So the small one is one that was picked eight days ago and that one wasn't picked eight days ago, but was eight days before that. So you can see how much growth they put on. It's more than a leaf a day. And then after picking, you have a chance to get another crop growing. I find it works really well with lettuce because it's not too greedy for space. It doesn't shade, especially after picking. So we've popped in fennel and spinach and a bit of landcress even. So these are, the fennel will be for making bulbs in October, bulb fennel, even November. The spinach will get established and do like the spinach did over there last winter. Very hardy plants. So that will be for cropping late autumn, a little bit in the winter, more dormant but it survives the winter and then it crops again in the spring. So from that one planting, a sowing made 10th of August, lots of crops. And I put a bit more compost on the ground before planting the spinach and landcress yesterday. Just as a little catch crop in between, this was broad beans here um, in the spring and early summer. And then we had calabrese and around the calabrese, even as they were finishing, You'll see that on the last film. I popped in these radicchio or chicories. They're making their hearts or starting to heart up now. They'll be lovely to harvest over the next six weeks or so. And then under the mesh here is leeks. I have this cover on because there's a pest called leek moth, which can, we actually had to double it up because the, they grew so tall. Um, you can see fantastic growth. There's, there's a huge number of leeks here and they're planted three or four in a clump and you can twist out the biggest one as it comes ready which is from now really so there's a harvest about to happen whereas here we have a really ongoing harvest these french beans have been amazing it's this one for example a yellow french bean and uh, here we've left one unpicked to go to seed so this one has not been picked at all this plant and these seeds are now starting to dry these pods and you can pick them for seed at that stage, but they're not hurting actually to stay here a bit longer. We'll probably just twist out the whole plant in about three weeks, hang it up to dry and then shell out the seeds. So that's next year's seed. And there's a different sort of French bean here, which is a, a uh, sorry, that's another yellow one. There's a green one there. It's been just cropping every week. We've had altogether 4.6 kilos. That's 10 pounds of French beans from these two little blocks. And that's over a period of six weeks. So it's, it's what you want from a veg garden. There's little and often meals, lots of meals. This patch was onions. And in fact, the onions are over there. Um, I've, I've been drying them um, in a cold frame. And as soon as the onions were cleared, I popped in these kale plants. This is a red vein kale, very pretty one. You can see it's got some holes in there. Are uh, caterpillars and other insects. The brassicas we have been spraying a bit with Bacillus thuringiensis, um, 
and actually either it's not working here I think we might have missed a spray on these plants because they are a bit eaten but I'm not too worried about that because they're not really for eating now mainly they, the new growth is healthy and they're going to make strong plants for harvest through the autumn winter even next spring last two here more chicories so they're great either cooked or in a salad and beetroot following carrots so that where the chicories are was two and a half kilos of beetroot in the spring and where these beetroot are was four kilos of carrots in early summer so we've had fantastic pickings from here just this small area as well as the delicious food that's growing here I always take vegetable gardening as a chance to grow a few flowers and you can see them looking gorgeous here that's a dahlia bulb which we put in back in the spring in April and in May these are seedlings I raised from seed snapdragon or antirhinum zinnia cosmos much loved by insects particularly the cosmos french marigolds more zinnia and a remarkable one on the corner which is actually self-sown uh, Kalaloo, it's an edible leaf, also known as amaranth, which actually makes an edible seed as well. You need though a slightly hotter summer than we have here normally to get a worthwhile crop of seed, but I'm allowing it to be there mostly for ornament, but I'm watching it too. I don't want to leave it too long or it'll just drop millions of seeds everywhere. And here's a remarkable thing for Great Britain, Zone 8, <laughs> summer's normally temperate, not hot. We have ripe peppers, there's a yellow pepper on this plant. I've already harvested three quite big yellow peppers. You can eat them green like that. That one's just starting to colour up. That darkening is not nothing, not a problem. It's the first hint of it going yellow, funnily enough. And at that stage, they're not as sweet though as when they coloured. So you've got two options there of how to eat them. And more options here because these tomatoes have just been fantastic. Uh, three varieties of outdoor tomato dorada is the yellow one and it's got a really really unusual flavor very agreeable prima bella it might be primavera it's one of the two and at the back there's a sun gold which is probably the most tasty one all good to grow outside and you can see i've managed to keep them upright we have because we've got very shallow soil here I mean, it seems amazing, doesn't it? Look at this abundance, but the soil here is not deep. There's big stones underneath, uh, maybe a bit of concrete too. And so we can't get stakes in very far. So we had to use a lot of stakes and even some string round just to keep these tomatoes upright. But it's been worth the doing because we've had nearly five kilos, 12, 11 pounds of fruit already from these cherry tomatoes and they're gonna crop for longer. And we've stopped them already. That's just something that needs doing in August. So, and then you take off all side shoots like that you don't want to let them make any more growth at this time of year. All the energy wants to go into the fruit, both growing the remaining ones and ripening them. So deleafing up to the bottommost truss roughly, allowing all these top leaves because they're still working, but no, no new shoots. And you, you get new shoots popping out all sorts of funny places like here is one that was growing on the end of um, a truss there. So you just watch out for that and take them off. In front of the tomatoes is carrots, which I sowed between lettuce. This little patch of ground gave six kilos of lettuce. That's over 13 pounds of lettuce leaves in the spring, between mainly May, June and early July. And as they were finishing, I sowed these carrots. So that's carrots now for autumn. And around the strip, there was a bit of a gap where maybe it was too dry for the carrots to come up. And I've popped in some coriander plants. So I'm looking always to fill any mini gaps with say herbs like that we've got chives here already so there's quite a variety of food and then again looking ahead i've sown some spinach between the tomatoes this was about a month ago and we we had a showery spell of weather i drew out some drills put water in the drill not general watering but water in the drill dropped the seed on that wet line covered over with dry and just left it and I wasn't sure actually how well that would work in terms of germination. But it's like nothing ventured, nothing gained. And it's, what does it cost? A bit of time and a few seeds. And in fact, they've nearly all have germinated. So I need to thin these out now because 
uh, I don't want as many spinach plants as that. I can start to be a bit selective and work out leave more if you want small leaves or thin them more if you want big leaves. And finally at the back here we have some amazing kale. This is where the spinach was last winter and it carried on cropping until the end of May. And because it had been in the ground a long time, I hadn't had any chance to put compost on like I normally would in the winter. All of this garden is fed only with compost. I'm using no fertilizers. I'm not feeding the tomatoes, no fertilizers of any kind. It's just the compost put on once a year. In the case of the spinach, because I couldn't put the compost on in the winter, we put some compost on in early June before planting this Cavallo Nero kale and a perennial kale there, Taunton Dean. And the compost that went on here was actually 40 litre sack of multi-purpose potting compost, which I use normally for um, propagation. I had a spare sack, so I put it on there. It just gives you an idea that was 40 litres. And I would say that's been a good investment because, I mean, look at this cow, it's wonderful. Again, we have sprayed that with the bacteria, which um, hampers the development of the caterpillars. And we've had already over a kilo and a half of kale leaves and much more to come right the way through the autumn into winter. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the garden and we'll come back to this in the autumn ongoing. So much to see here and, and enjoy. Mm -hmm.